Hello, YouTube world. I want to talk to you a little bit about salvation and the power of the blood of Jesus. And it's critical that we understand that Jesus Christ has already paid our entire sin debt in full. He, he paid the price for all of our sins, past, present, and future. And if we believe that all of our sins are, are forgiven and we're given eternal life, and it's critical that we believe that Jesus Christ has paid the price through his shed blood and his death, burial, and resurrection for all of our sins, past, present, and future, and that Jesus Christ, his death, burial, and resurrection gives us eternal life. It's critical to realize that Jesus, through his shed blood, and his death, burial, and resurrection has already paid the price for our future sins as well. Where people get into trouble is if they believe in the backload, which is what is taught by most churches and pastors now. That you know they say, well, you know, you need to believe, uh, you know, and be saved through faith. And Jesus has forgiven all of your past sins, but you know you need to do your part and, uh, you know, uh, live holy and do good works, and you need to maintain your salvation, or else you can lose your salvation. So what they do is they preach a faith and works gospel, which is accursed. You know, they'll teach that Jesus saves you up front, you know, and you're saved by faith up front, and your past sins are forgiven. But then they say that, well, you yourself... You need to do your part and, you know, you need to show the works to prove salvation. And, uh, you know, if you if you sin, and by the way, they never define what, what kind of sin or how many sins, but, you know, if you fall into sin, you'll lose your salvation. So what that is actually doing is trampling on the blood of Jesus Christ, saying the blood of Jesus Christ wasn't enough, that he, he's not your only savior, you need to be the co-savior. That's where this backload false gospel comes in, is when people teach that, well, Jesus, you know, he yeah, he saves you up front, and you're saved by faith up front in his death and resurrection, and he forgives all of your past sins, uh, but, you know, your future sins aren't taken care of. You know, you, you know, you need to work at your salvation. You need to show the good works. And, uh, you know, if you sin, you can lose your salvation. So do you, do you see what's happening there? Is there that, that kind of a cursed gospel makes you the co-savior with Jesus? That can't be the case. There's only one savior, Jesus Christ. He's God. You're not God. I'm not God. Okay, we have, we have sin. We, we can't save ourselves. So you, you, you've got to have one Savior in Jesus Christ. It can't be, you know, Jesus is the Savior and I'm the Savior too. You know, it has to be Jesus' blood paid the price for all of your sins to be saved. It can't be, well, Jesus paid the price, you know, for my past sins, but, you know, now I, I've got to do my part and I'll work at my salvation and, and I'll do the good works and that'll get me into heaven. That's not how a person is saved. A person is saved by believing that the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ in his shed blood has paid the price for all of our sins and given us eternal life, okay? That, that is the gospel and how we're saved. And, uh, you know, we should do good works. We, we should and we need to read the Bible, pray every day, be of service to others preach the gospel, so on and, and so forth. We absolutely do, and in no way am I encouraging or saying it's all right to sin. We need to avoid sin the very best we can. There are consequences, okay? So I just want to play a, a great short clip here from Pastor J.B. Watkins at Fault Line Grace, and he's the strongest preacher out there I know of. I don't know a better preacher anywhere um, you know, I, I listen to his sermons every day. I couldn't encourage you enough, as I've said before, to check out Fault Line Grace. It's just a fantastic Bible study, and he gets into the uh, the Bible codes. The Bible codes unsealed by Sean Mitchell, 
and he will preach those as well. And he, he uh, gives a ton of information about what's going on in the world, world events, what's going on in the world stage concerning the upcoming rapture and tribulation period. So uh, let's go ahead and uh, play uh, this clip from J.B. Watkins' sermon and Bible study last night. What a burden, what a heavy weight was your sin and my sin on him. Your guilt, my guilt, our everything that comes with sin, our death. This is life. He's the one who gives life. He's eternal life. And there he was willing to give himself up unto death, and not just death, but the death of the cross. Bono says when people want to deny that he paid for all sin, they place guilt on him over and over and over. So terrible. He's already paid your price in full. And this receipt of the Shroud of Turin proves it. You must believe it and quit re-crucifying our Christ afresh. He's taken care of the sin issue. Now it's up to you to believe that and receive his righteousness in doing that. And that is the requirement to get to heaven is his righteousness. And you cannot have his righteousness until you believe in his death on your behalf, that he took care of it and he paid for it in full. Amen. Okay, and that was Michael Vondren uh, that was making a point there uh, as well with this comment. And so the point that Michael Vondren made was that if you don't believe that Jesus paid for all of your sins, paid your full sin debt, including your future sins, and you think that you have something to do with your salvation, that you need to do good works and, and you need to prove your salvation and you have a part in your salvation, you know, or if you think that you can lose your salvation, you know, if you sin or whatever, you're adding guilt to Jesus. You're trampling on his blood, you know, that that is not the gospel. That's an accursed gospel if you think that you have something to do with your salvation and you need good works to prove your salvation or you could lose your salvation, you, you need to maintain it. No, Jesus get forgive. He, he paid the price for all of our sins and he gives us eternal life and you believe that. That's how you're saved. You know, let's listen because it's such a great point here. Uh, let's listen to this uh, one more time here. Spring of blood. There's blood all over this. They know it's blood when they look at it and have analyzed it. Life. He's the one who gives life. He's eternal life. And there he was willing to give himself up unto death, and not just death, but the death of the cross. Bono says when people want to deny that he paid for all sin, they place guilt on him over and over and over. So, And as Michael Vondren said there, when people want to deny that Jesus paid for all sin, they place guilt on him over and over and over again. That's what you need to realize. If you believe that you can lose salvation and you're thinking you need good works to maintain salvation, you know, that you can lose salvation if you sin and you need good works to maintain salvation, what you're doing is you're putting guilt on Jesus, okay, over and over. You're, you're re-crucifying him. It's like saying, you know, Jesus, what you did isn't enough. Your precious shed blood isn't enough. You're, you, you know, you're not good enough to be the one and only true Savior. I need to be the co-Savior with you. So it's critical to understand that's an accursed gospel, okay? Jesus shed blood, paid it all, paid for every sin of every single person, all right? That's the only way we get to heaven. Our job, we believe that. Our job is just to believe. We don't need to help them out. And as I've said, we should do good works, absolutely. We should avoid sin the very best we can, absolutely. But we just need to understand, you know, good works are part of discipleship, okay? Good works don't save you. That's critical to understand that doing good works don't save us. We need to do and should do good works out of obedience to God and to show love to him and gratefulness. Yeah, to Jesus Christ for what he did for us. But our works don't save us. We're, we, we're not good enough to save ourselves. Only Jesus was. He lived a perfect, sinless life. He paid our sin debt in full through his shed blood, his death and resurrection. So we just believe that. And when we truly believe that, that he paid our sin debt in full and gives us eternal life, we have eternal life. We're sealed with the Holy Spirit. Amen.
terrible. He's already paid your price in full, and this receipt of the Shroud of Turin proves it. You must believe it and quit re-crucifying our Christ afresh. He's taken care of the sin issue. And that's what you're doing. If you don't believe Jesus Christ paid your full sin debt, but if you only, you believe that only he, he only paid for your past sins, and now it's your job to work at your salvation and to maintain it and to pay for your sins on your own, you're re-crucifying Jesus Christ. You're saying, in essence, that his shed blood wasn't enough. It's critical to understand that you don't want to be left behind. Uh, you don't want to miss the rapture and be left behind to go through the tribulation period. So it's critical that you have the gospel right and understand this. Now it's up to you to believe that and receive his righteousness in doing that. And that is the requirement to get to heaven is his righteousness. And you it's up to you to believe that and receive his righteousness in doing that. In full. And this receipt of the Shroud of Turin proves it. You must believe it. And quit re-crucifying our Christ afresh. He's taken care of... I just want to play this one more time. Final says, when people want to deny that he paid for all sin, they place guilt on him over and over and over. So terrible. He's already paid your price in full. And this receipt of the Shroud of Turin proves it. You must believe it. And quit re-crucifying our Christ afresh. He's taken care of the sin issue. Now it's up to you to believe that and receive his righteousness in doing that. And that is the requirement to get to heaven is his righteousness. And that's the point. Jesus Christ has already paid our full sin debt. Okay? We don't need to do good works to get to heaven. Our job is we just believe in what Jesus already did paying our sin debt. And when we believe that, we receive the righteous of Je righteousness of Jesus Christ. The righteousness of Jesus Christ is imputed to us. We're sealed with the Holy Spirit. We have eternal life. Amen. And you cannot have his righteousness until you believe in his death on your behalf. That he took care of it and he paid for it in full. Amen. My cross. Okay, so I couldn't encourage you enough to uh, check out Fault Line Grace, Pastor J.B. Watkins. Uh, he's a much better preacher than I am. I'll tell you what, a, a, you know, great man of God. Um, so, you know, that's the point. Hebrews 10, 12. But this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down on the right hand of God. This is talking about Jesus Christ, obviously. One sacrifice for sins forever. So it says for sins forever. It doesn't say uh, for your sins in your life uh, in the past up to this point now. But then you've got to pay for your future sins. It says uh, he offered one sacrifice for sins forever. So those are sins past, present, future. He paid the price for all your sins. You just need to believe that and receive eternal life. It's critical. You can't have anything to do with your salvation, and you can't add to the gospel, okay? It, it, whether the front load or the back load, if you think, well, I've got to repent of my sins and get my life straight in order to be saved, that's an accursed gospel. No, you need to just believe that Jesus has paid your full sin debt. If you believe, well, I, I'm saved by faith up front, you know, and Jesus paid the price for my past sins, but I need to work out my salvation and do good works. And if I sin, I can lose it. That's the back load. Okay. No, Jesus has paid your full sin debt. And you can't add any works to it. That would include something like an ordinance like water baptism. Water baptism is great. I've been baptized, okay? But it doesn't save you. Only the blood of Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection saves you. So anyone that says, you know, you need to be water baptized to be saved, no, that's adding works to the gospel. That's, that's, loading, that's loading in works. That's the front load. Anyone that says, well, you need to speak in tongues, to prove salvation. Well, speaking in tongues is a work. You're backloading, you know. If anyone says, well, you need to have someone lay hands on you to receive the Holy Spirit, uh, like, what is it, the uh, Calvary Chapel, you know, in, in some of these churches, uh, you know, some of these charismatic churches teach, 
No, you receive the Holy Spirit immediately upon belief, as Paul told us in Ephesians chapter 1. We'll look at that scripture, okay? So it can't be Jesus plus anything. It has to be Jesus alone, all right? It is purely believing that the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ forgives all of your sins, past, present, future, and gives you eternal life. There can't be any works on the front end or the back end. You can't front load or back load. You're saved purely by believing what Jesus did, and it's eternal. And, you know, we, we want to do good works. We should. We should avoid sin the very best we can. We just need to understand that has nothing to do with saving us. Only Jesus saves. Amen. Romans 10, 4, for Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believeth. So you see here, if you believe Christ is the end of the law for you, you're no longer under the law. You know, you're no longer going to be eternally condemned. Now, there are consequences for sin if you sin, even when you're saved. But you, you are no longer under the law in terms of eternal damnation and going to hell. You've been freed for that if you fully believed and what Jesus Christ has done is death, burial, and resurrection to forgive all your sins and give you eternal life, then Christ is the end of the law for you, and you have eternal life. Hebrews 12, 6 to 8 says, For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth, and scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. If ye endure chastening, God dealeth with you as with sons. For what son is he whom the Father chasteneth not? But if ye be without chastisement, whereof all are partakers, then are ye bastards and not sins and not sin. So, you know, I've had some commenters saying that I'm encouraging sin by preaching the real true gospel. That is absolutely ridiculous. I never have encouraged sin. I, I've said it many times. We need to do our very best to avoid sin. We need to try to avoid sin at all costs, okay? No, we, we do not. It, it's not a license to sin. You know, it's as if I'm saying, Oh, well, you know, if you get saved, now it's time to just party, man. Go go out to the bars and live it up and party and fornicate. That's absolutely ridiculous. Paul makes it very clear in the Bible that it is not a license to sin, okay? And if you're truly saved and have the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit will convict you of your sins and will lead you into righteousness. So that's walking in spirit, the people that think the real gospel is a license to sin, uh, it's very likely you're not saved and don't have the Holy Spirit if you don't understand that. So it's a red flag. You're either very, conf you're either saved and very, very confused and don't know the Word of God very well at all, or you're likely not saved. So it's critical that we understand this. So Hebrews 12. This is talking about sin. If you're a believer and saved, there are consequences for sin. Excuse me. You'll never lose your salvation, but the Lord will chasten you. And I can tell you this from experience. That's been the case with me. You know, if you're saved and you have sin, you know, and we all still sin uh, from, from time to time. And of course, you know, I, I've got a pop up here. Uh, Okay, so, you know, God will chasten you for sins, and there are earthly consequences for sins. You do not want to sin. You would want to avoid sin at all costs, but you'll never lose your salvation if you're truly saved. And how about this? Verse 8 is a warning. You know, if you're not being chastened for sin, it, it's cause for concern. It says that God does not chasten bastards. Those that are not his sons. Those that are not born again and fill the Holy Spirit. So it's like when you see people that are doing terrible things in the world, whatever those may be, and they just continue to get by with that and prosper. Like, look at the people that run the world to control it, you know, that, that do very wicked, evil things. And they just continue to make more money and, and prosper in their lives. Well, that's usually an indication those people are not saved and sons of daughters of God because God will chasten his sons and their daughters. So this is a great uh, chapter, Hebrews 12, to understand the role of sin in a believer's life. There are absolutely consequences for, you know, earthly consequences for sin. God will chasten you even severely at times, uh, you know, in, in some cases. But you can never lose your salvation, all right? You, are, you have eternal life if you're truly saved. 
1 John 1 8 says, If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. So even after a person is saved, they will still sin. They will still have some sin in their lives, and they will still sin. And as I've said before, you know, we sin in word, thought, and deed. And even if you're not, you know, say you're not sinning in your actions, you're still sinning in your mind all the time, thinking thoughts you shouldn't be. Let me give you an example. You, we all have sins of omission. You know, if you look at the Old Testament, I think there are over 600 laws that need to be observed. When we get into ceremonial laws like observing the Sabbath and, and all these other things, you know, uh, that that had to be observed none of us keep all those you know one man was able to keep the law perfectly jesus christ god in the flesh one man that's it so every one of us has sinner lives even all of us are saved we still have sinful thoughts and we still have sins of omission at the very least now we look at hebrews 10 26 to 29 for if we sin willfully, after that we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remained no more sacrifice for sins, but a certain fiercel looking for judgment and fire into nation which shall devour the adversaries. He that despised Moses' law died without mercy under two or three witnesses. Of how much sore punishment suppose ye shall he be thought worthy who had trodden under for the Son of God and hath cowed the blood of the covenant worth you sanctified an unholy thing in the and it's done despite under the spirit of grace and that's what this scripture is talking about, is treading underfoot uh, the blood of the covenant of Jesus Christ. And when it's talking about if we sin willfully after we receive the knowledge of the truth, there remained no more sacrifice for sins. Well, what is the one unpardonable sin that sends you to hell? You know, is that fornication? Is that stealing? Uh, you know, it, is that taking the Lord's name in vain? Is that coveting? No, it's unbelief. That's the one sin that sends a person to hell is unbelief, not believing in, in Jesus Christ for salvation, okay? So this is a scripture that often gets twisted by false teachers that teach you can lose your salvation. And uh, you know what? I'm going to play a quick clip from Greg Jackson, and I'm doing this. You know, Greg Jackson, I know this. He is correct on the gospel, absolutely correct on the gospel. He's a saved man. He's a brother in the Lord. And I know this, he does a good job, uh, taught, you know, summarizing uh, these verses in Hebrews. So let's play a quick clip uh, from Greg Jackson on this. And the only requirement to receive that gift is to believe that he did it for you. Okay. So let me go now to the troubling verse, verse 26. So for it's, it says, so this is Hebrews 10, 26 is this, you know, troubling verse that so many false teachers take out of context. For if we sin willfully, after that we have received the knowledge of the truth, that there remaineth no more sacrifice for sins. All right, but in verse 27 it says, but a certain fearful looking for of judgment and fire indignation, which shall devour the adversaries. All right, so a lot of false teachers, again, will say, see, Verse 26 proves if, you, if you're sinning willfully after you're saved, all right, you can lose your salvation. There's no more sacrifice for sins. Well, if that were the case, then every time we sinned, we'd lose our salvation. and We'd have to get born again over and over and over. See, and that's a great point. If we could lose our salvation after sinning, every one of us would lose our salvation. I've talked about this. Read Matthew chapter 5. Jesus said that if you merely look on a woman with lust, you've committed adultery with, our, with already in your heart. If you think a lustful thought about someone, you've committed the sin already. It's same with stealing. If you're just thinking about stealing something, you've committed the sin. So if that were the case, every one of us would lose their salvation after sinning. Here's the other thing. You can't be unborn again. You must be born again to be saved. You can't be born unborn again. It's impossible. Think about it. Once you're born into this world, can you be unborn and go back in your mother's womb? No. You can die, but you can never be unborn. Once you come out of your mother's womb and you're born, you're born. You can't be unborn. Okay. Again, same spiritually. Once you've been born again and, and received the Holy Spirit and been sealed with the Holy Spirit, 
as it says in Ephesians chapter 1, verses 13 to 14, you're born again of spirit. You can't be unborn again of spirit, okay? It's very clear. Over. But this, said, this says, but there remaineth no more sin, sacrifice for sins. So that would mean that if you sinned even once, willfully, and by the way, all sin is willful, um, you're telling me that when you don't overeat, that you're not doing it willfully? You're doing it accidentally? Gluttony is a, is a sin. There's another one. Gluttony is a sin. Not many people think about that. You know, people overeat all the time, but they don't think, you know, of gluttony is a sin. You're telling me that when you light up that cigarette that you're just doing it accidentally? There's another one. Smoking is a sin. You know, so many things are sins and people don't think about it. This is the, the delusion of self-righteousness. The people that think that they can lose their salvation and think that they're living holy and righteously and maintain their salvation, they're actually condoning sin and thinking sin is all right because they're excusing the sin in their own life. See, and that's the difference. The born-again believer understands that they are flawed and have sin and they can never be perfect and right with God. So they come to the end of themselves and they trust in Jesus Christ alone as Savior. The people that think that they can maintain their salvation and they're doing so aren't being honest with themselves because they aren't admitting that they, you know, really do have sin in their life, you know. And sin is not acceptable with God. He requires perfection to get to heaven. It's not like, oh, well, you kept the law 80% or 95%. You have to keep the law perfectly, 100% to get to heaven. Jesus Christ was the only one that ever did that. So we can't do it on our own righteousness. We've got to have the righteousness of Jesus Christ. That's the only way. And that's why salvation comes by grace through faith alone is we need the righteousness of Jesus Christ not our own righteousness. Jesus was the only one that's perfectly righteous, so we'll never be perfectly righteous. So we need the righteousness of Jesus Christ imputed to us. How does that come? Through believing that his death, burial, and resurrection has forgiven all of our sins, past, present, future, and given us eternal life. Amen. It's not willful. So we know now there are sins of, of omission, sins that we're not even aware of, and, and it's like I mentioned, sins of omission. We're not doing all the things we should be doing. You know, no, we're not observing all the aspects of the law that we should. There are a lot of times we should help people and we're not doing it. So if you're honest and you really look at yourself, you realize how fall, far short you fall every single day, how badly you need a Savior, and that Jesus Christ is the only way of salvation, and you yourself can have nothing to do it. You're not good enough to maintain your salvation. I'm not good enough to maintain my salvation. We can't be the co-savior. Jesus Christ himself is the only savior. And I'm pleading with you right now, the rapture is coming very soon. Make sure you're correct on the gospel and that you are trusting in Jesus Christ alone as savior and not in anything that you're doing or have done. That are covered by the blood of Jesus, okay? Um, but virtually every sin that you do uh, some are accidental, okay? I'm not disputing that. But most of the sins that we commit, we're fully knowledgeable of. We're fully aware of, okay? Um, but if, it, if, if the case were, I'm using the subjunctive tense here, were, that every time if you sinned willfully, it says here that there remaineth no more sacrifice for sins. If you believe that uh, that means that uh, you can lose your salvation, well, it says here, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sins if we sin willfully, which would mean the first time a believer ever sinned willfully, they would lose their salvation and there would be, again, no more sacrifice for sins. See, that's a great point in Hebrews 10, 26. It says we sin foot willfully, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sins. So if you could lose your salvation, all of us would after sinning once. We lose our salvation. There's no more sacrifice for sins. Jesus would have to die for us again, be resurrected again. That's impossible. So if you could lose your salvation, you know, after sinning, all of us would, and there would be no more sacrifice for sins. That's it. 
you're done. So praise God. Can you see how beautiful it is that it's eternal salvation, eternal security, that you can never lose your salvation? It's, it's so clear when you just really know the word and understand this and think about it. So that mean, would mean that you could never regain your salvation. Do you understand what I'm saying? What this verse is saying is, it says, For if we sin willfully after we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sins. So context is everything. Who's Paul talking to right here? Well, he's, again, remember, he's talking to mostly believers. But what he's saying here is that if we... Uh, th this gives us the clue right here. He says, For if we sin willfully... After that, we have received the knowledge of the truth. There remaineth no more sacrifice for sin. So what is the, the knowledge of the truth? Well, knowledge of the truth, he's talking about the gospel. So if, what he's saying here is that if, if we sin by not believing, not trusting in Christ alone as Savior, all right, after we've heard the gospel, it's been preached to us, we've heard it, but we've rejected it. We've had a knowledge of the truth, a head knowledge. You know, I've heard of this Jesus guy. I heard he pay, 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 paid the price for all of my sins, but you know what? I'm going back to the sacrificial system. I, I'm, I, I'm rejecting the truth. I'm choosing with my own volition to reject the truth of the gospel. And I'm going to go back and I'm going to take part in the animal sacrifices, the old sacrificial system. I'm going to try to follow the law. Even though I've heard that Jesus was the final sacrifice. He's the, was the fulfill, he fulfilled the law. I'm going to reject his sin offering, paying for my sin debt. And I am going, that's the willful sin spoken of in verse 26. Great point. So that willful sin in, in Hebrews 10, 26 is unbelief, not believing in Jesus Christ's sacrifice for forgiveness of sins. In eternal life. And if you do that, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sins. You know, sacrificing, you know, uh, you know, cows and goats, whatever, uh, it's not going to do anything for you. If you sin willfully, that one unpardonable sin, not believing in the sacrifice of Jesus Christ to pay for all your sins and give you eternal life, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sins. Uh, right on point there. What, what are you saying? Okay, and what Paul is saying here is that if you reject the gospel, all right, that is that willful sin spoken of in verse 26, then there remaineth no more sacrifice for sins. Because Jesus, as he said in verse 10 earlier, what does he say? By the which we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. Jesus Christ offered once for all. Jesus was the final sacrifice. That's why he proclaimed on the cross to tell us that it is finished. And that's the point. Jesus said it's finished. You either believe it or you don't. Do, do you believe it's finished? That Jesus Christ has paid the price for all of your sins, past, present, future, and given you eternal life? Or do you not? Do you believe that you need to maintain your salvation, that you can lose your salvation if you sin or whatever, if that's the case, you're not really believing it's finished. That's what it's all comes down to. You. Do, you believe, do you believe what Jesus did was enough? That what he said is true, that it's finished. If you believe it's finished, that he's paid the price for all your sins, past, present, future, giving you eternal life, you have eternal life, okay? But if you, if you don't believe it's finished, that's a real problem. And as, as I've said before, if you're wavering on this, and thinking maybe you can lose your salvation. As I've said before, you've only got to believe one time, truly believe it to be saved. You know, it's possible uh, to be, con you, you don't have to believe this every single day, okay? If you truly believe this one time that Jesus Christ paid your full sin debt and has given you eternal life, you're saved. It's possible to get confused on this, particularly if you're a, a new believer and don't know the Bible very well. You can get confused and have thoughts that you might be able to lose your salvation. Okay, and that doesn't mean you're not saved. Once saved, always saved. But it's a red flag. And, you know, the people that are militant against the true gospel and just fiercely proclaim over and over again you can lose your salvation, that's very concerning. And 
those people like that that are more than a little bit confused, that are that are just militant against grace and the gospel, it's not looking good. You know, most of those people are probably not saved. Uh, so it's critical that we're right on this, and it's a red flag right now. If you're confused about this, and you're thinking maybe you can lose your salvation, you know, or or you need to maintain your salvation with good works, it's either one of two things. Either you were saved at some point in the past and you don't know the Bible very well and you're confused or you have never been saved and you want to be you want to be clear on this and be 100 percent certain that you're saved. So I just couldn't encourage you enough to just be clear on this, to know that when you trust in Jesus Christ, death, run, resurrection to forgive all of your sins, past, present, future, and to give you eternal life, you have eternal life. You can never lose it. So. Anyone that, you know, has, has been saved and maybe doesn't know the Bible very well and is a little bit confused, I hope this clears it up and you would never have another doubt again. And those that are not saved, I pray that today is the day of salvation, okay? Because we've been given the promise of eternal life. Titus 1, 2, and hope of eternal life, which God that cannot lie promised before the world began. John six forty seven. Verily, verily, send you, he that believeth on me hath everlasting life. So Jesus promised us eternal life. He says that those that believe on him have eternal life. And we've been promised that if that we are sealed the Holy Spirit. Ephesians 1, 13 and 14. Whom you also trusted after you had the, heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. So after you heard the gospel, you trusted and believed. In whom also after that you believed. So you believe the gospel. You believe that story that Jesus Christ forgives all your sins, past, present, and future, and gives you eternal life, it says, you were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. So you're sealed. You can never be unsealed, which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchase price under the praise of his glory. So you are sealed with the Holy Spirit until the redemption of the purchase possession. Okay. Ephesians 4.30 also talks about this. Engrave not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby you are sealed until the day of redemption. That day of the redemption being the rapture. You know, I didn't put it up that one up, but also 1 John 5, 13. We may know we have eternal life, okay? We, we, we know that because the scripture tells us that so we can be confident and know with 100% certainty uh, that we're saved. So, you know, I, I hope this is really clear that Jesus paid the price for all of our sins, past, present, future. He, his blood paid the full sin debt. It wasn't just our past sins, and now we need to maintain our salvation or do our part, or we can you know, lose our salvation if we sin. No, Jesus paid the full sin debt, paid for all of our sins, past, present, future, and has given us eternal life. We just have to believe that. And if you believe that, you have eternal life, you never lose it, and you'll be going at the rapture here very soon. So I, I pray this video has been a, a blessing. Uh, you know, God bless you, and uh, Lord will not talk to you again soon.